Hello and welcome to this video about how to diagnose problems in transistor radios without using a RF signal generator, an LF signal generator or an oscilloscope. Now, usually when you start finding faults, um, the first thing you do should always be turn it on. And so I'm going to turn it on. The circuit board is over here. And if I try to tune, no sound. Now, what's next? If you don't hear anything, what, what are you going to do? Well, almost every transistor radio consists of three parts. You have the amplifier, the audio amplifier. You have the IF intermediate frequency amplifier and the detector. And you, ha you have the um, oscillator at mixing stage, which is combined in one transistor. This is the input stage, uh, the input preselection. This is the tuning of the uh, oscillator. Now, we can hear it doesn't work. Where do we start? The first thing I always do is I would normally um, use a signal generator to put a signal right over there to test if any signal is going through the amplifier to the output transistor to the loudspeaker. However, we are not going to use a, amp uh, a signal generator. Instead, I'm going to use my fingers to inject a signal just at random places. Only do this on battery operated transistor radios, by the way. Never on mains operated ones. Inject signals at random places on the circuit board. What we hear over here, what we hear over here out of the speaker is the signal I'm putting in with my fingers picked up from the uh, ambient 50 Hertz field and what we also hear the crackle of the potentiometer so what can we conclude from this if I touch something in here the loudspeaker buzzes at the normal level which means the output amplifier is working output stage is working and also if we uh, turn the volume potentiometer, we hear the telltale crackle of a slightly dirty potentiometer. So this whole, help, this whole block over here is functioning. The next block we can check, the IF amplifier. Now this is going to get a bit more interesting. Normally you would put a AM modulated uh, radio signal right on here, this input transistor of the IF amplifier. I would normally do that with the signal generator on my workbench. However, we are not going to do that. Instead, we are going to use one extra radio because um, all super heterodyne radios, all transistor radios, they almost all use 455, 452 or 465 kilohertz. IF frequencies. So, in another radio, which is going to be this little one over here, Sanyo, Sanyo RP1270, RP1270, this little radio also has this thing in there. So, from over here, this spot in this radio, we can uh, connect this part in this radio to this part in this radio. So let's do it. Now the first thing we have to do is find a radio station on this radio. Um, I'm warning you it's gonna be very noisy because um, I am working here on my workbench with which has uh, fluorescent lighting and my computer on it and it's just very very noisy.
any better stations maybe in this direction it truly is horrific close enough now we are gonna find this point in this radio this is L302 which I already found is this coil over here we connect a wire to that one and on the end of the uh, crocodile clip lead wire we put a 5 picofarad capacitor 5 picofarads, maybe 10, maybe 3, something in that area we open up the little radio something under there against scratches and we connect another wire another clock crocodile clip lead to connect the ground of the radios together and now with this one which is connected to uh, to the IF amplifier over here we're gonna try and find the detection diode in this little radio and what we should hear if I turn off the volume of this one is the same station through the loudspeaker of this radio as we can hear through the loudspeaker of this radio And I can turn off this radio for now. Uh, turn off the sound. The radio still has to be running. I've done this before, so I know where it is. It is right over here. And exactly, we hear the correct station from the broken radio. Also, if I tune, we will hear the different stations out of the big radio. So, what can we conclude from this? By feeding a signal from this part of this radio into this part of this radio, we conclude that this whole bit over here from the uh, IF input to the detector to the loudspeaker that is all working correctly yay so two out of three blocks of the radio are working what's next well it is the um, pre-selector and oscillator stage and mixer pre-selector oscillator mixer all of those things are done in this one transistor and we can test if those work by listening again on the radio for the oscillator signal because this thing generates an actual very tiny radio signal that you can pick up with another radio so uh, what I'm gonna do is, um, disconnect these Put the back cover back on there, just for convenience sake. I'm gonna try if this radio is producing an oscillator signal. And for that, I have to turn it, uh, tune the radio to about 1500 kilohertz. Put on the sound, find a weak station if possible. And then, Tune this radio to 450 kilohertz below this one. So this one is at around 1500. This one should be at 1150. No, wait. This one should be at 1050 about. About 1050 kilohertz.
So we are going to tune it, and we should hear something. Nothing at all. If we use this radio, we tune it to around 1050. We hear the telltale heterodyne whistle. Because this radio also has this part, generating this tiny radio frequency that you can receive on this radio. Um, the fact that this one doesn't create that signal tells us that um, the oscillator over here is not working. So, what is the next stage? Um, well, we have tried out this bit over here by injecting the, the hum signal with our fingers. We have tested it by listening to the crackle of the potentiometer, concluded this is working. We have injected a signal from this radio into here, which means this whole block, the intermediate frequency and the detector is working. And we have tried if we can pick up the oscillator radio signal with another radio that is not connected by anything. It's just a, it's literally transmitting a very tiny signal. That is not working. So um, there's only one thing we can do next. And that is, uh, yeah, there we can now only do a couple of things, uh, radically just replace components or measure. Um, of course, now we are going to use the basic tools, which is a ordinary multimeter. And we are going to measure the voltages on the transistor. All right. The transistor, the oscillator transistor over here is T201. And I have already located it on the board, which is over here. These transistors very uncommonly have their uh, lead frame sticking through the top of the transistor, which is really convenient. So I can measure it right over there. Zero on that one. Zero on the collector, is that right? Hmm, I don't know. Seems to be zero on the base too. Zero on everything. Uh, am I am I doing this right? Let's see if I can find voltage somewhere. What's going wrong? Something's going wrong. Yeah, maybe this ah this part does not seem to be connected to ground. So we're just gonna connect it to the variable capacitor, which is usually grounded in some kind of way. And let's see it over here. The rotating part of the capacitor is always usually connected to ground. Can we find the battery voltage? Not over there, but it should. Okay. Something is going very wrong. Yeah, my multimeter doesn't seem to work. It should measure the 6 volts of the battery right now, but it's not. Yes, there we go. Crusty contacts. Yes, this is correct. Now this uh, radio has the positive to ground, so it's you're not always going to see a positive voltage. It doesn't matter. On the collector, we measure minus 4.25 volts, volts, which I'm going to write down. On the, let's see, can we see? The emitter is the center one, odd pinout, but okay. 
4.28 on the emitter. 4. Point, mm, that's not supposed to be like that. And the base is this one. Minus 3.6. Mm, okay, I think this is a bit odd because usually the collector and the emitter are um, like 0.7 volt different from each other, which could mean one of the uh, the PN of wait it is NPN the NP or the PN uh, junction is broken in this transistor I think. Um, well. I think because the voltage over here and over here is equal that it is not working correctly and I have to solder out that transistor. I am not going to do that on camera. I am probably going to do that on a different video because this is uh, kind of everything I wanted to explain because the core of the video was measuring without measuring equipment, testing without measuring equipment. So. Test the audio frequency with your finger, only in uh, battery-operated radios, or with the crackling volume pot meter, potential meter if you haven't cleaned it yet. Test the IF stuff with a signal from a second radio that you feed into here. And test the oscillator by tuning one radio to a 1500 and then tuning the device under test to 1050. And then here for, for either a quiet, uh, for the noise to get quieter, or for a whistle if you have tuned it in, tuned this one into a small transmitter. And yeah, when you found the broken stage, you can look more detailed at the stage itself, what's wrong. And it might be this transistor because this and this voltage are equal. They should be like this one, I think they should be. I'm like... Seriously, I am much better at tube stuff. Um, but I think this voltage and this voltage should not be equal. That is it for now, people. Uh, let me know what you think of this method. And yeah, maybe this helps someone, helps beginners who don't yet have the nice measuring equipment to, to find, out, find out what's wrong with the radio. Of course, you can hook up the... Uh, oscilloscope to the transistor and you can put the RF signal in there and listen and yeah of course that is a good way too but this is a way that everyone can, everyone who has an extra radio can try for themselves. Alright thank you for watching and see you all later.